Hello and welcome to the next project we're starting. And we're going full ease with this one. The overarching goal here is we're gonna to try to powertrain swap this 80s Honda scooter with the powertrain from this Yamaha scooter. The Honda one I bought, I don't even know how long ago at this point, maybe three years, I don't, I don't know. It's just been storage, taking up space. And the plan has morphed over the years, but by the end of this episode, I'd like to have one cohesive unit so whether or not that's rideable and running is a different story. But, you know, if the thing can roll around on its own weight would be a good metric to start off with because that seems to be fairly feasible. So we'll go through some more details real quick and then the timeline for how I plan to achieve it. Probably going to set the bar too high too. So we'll see how this goes. Quick synopsis is we're going to take the modern powertrain from this scooter and throw it in that scooter. I like the 80s aesthetics there. I hate the aesthetics here. This powertrain's good. That doesn't even have a powertrain. So merge them together, make something cool, and then we can go rally them. I don't know about you, but I need deadlines to actually get anything done. And this being one of those, I've had this scooter for at least two years at this point, and it's been in storage. I've been slowly accumulating parts for it. It's kind of just been a basket case, and it's finally time to do something with it. Okay, I know you've seen this before. I know I've showed it before. This is an 83 Honda Aero 80, which was originally a 80cc two-stroke engine. You know, decent little scooter. This was like the middle one. I think there was a 50 and an Aero 125. So this was the middle one. You know, it's very 80s. Cool little scooter, but it's very incomplete. And all I'm gonna do is basically powertrain swap it with the Yamaha Vino over here. I've had this scooter so long that over the years of owning it and just brainstorming what I want to do with it, I've now had three different donors that I was gonna do this plan with. First, I had that black GY6 garbage moped and I was gonna big bore kit it but then that was only 90cc and not all that good to begin with. Then I went to the opposite end of the spectrum and got, uh, you can kind of see it back there, the Honda SH150i, which is the polar opposite. And that was the donor for the longest time until I started actually thinking about what it's gonna to take to swap it. And it's just too incompatible. One, it's substantially larger than the scooter, which is gonna pose a lot of problems. Two, that is a big wheel scooter and this is a regular size scooter wheel. So to find small wheels that work with that chassis and bolts into this frame is just, that's gonna be impossible without making something custom. So the wheels were a big one, the wiring is a big one. And then lastly, that bike is fuel injected and water cooled, neither of which this has provisions for. So while I could just throw everything in, then it's a matter of which tank do I use and then find a fuel pump to run it and then a fuel regulator to run that and find out what pressure it's supposed to run. Like it's just, there'd be so much involved that it's just not worth. Donor three is an 04 Yamaha Vino 125. So that's a 125 cc four stroke. It's a decent little scooter. It's got disc brakes. It's got a couple good amenities, but it's ugly. It's kind of slow, but I'm currently working on that. And I don't feel bad about game chucking the body because it's just really ugly. I much prefer the 80 stuff than this like fake retro stuff, like either commit to the retro and do the Vespa thing like back there or don't even try it. Like it just looks cheap. The Vino, when I bought it at auction, tank was full of varnish, carb was gummed up with crap, cleaned that out. And then it ran like pretty well. It's only got 3000 miles on it. So it was just neglected and sat for a while. I think it sat since 2013, if I remember right. Either way, I've just been doing a bunch of maintenance to it. Nothing that's worth even talking about. The only thing I am doing is doing some CVT mods, specifically because the rally we're going on is like a 150 plus rally, and I need this thing to keep up. When I bought it, the CVT was like super neglected, and it was honestly sketchy. When you take off from a dead stop, it would do nothing for a little bit, it'd rev up, and then like violently th drop into gear, you know, quote unquote gear, and then it would take off. Currently the CVT is all taken apart. I'm waiting on a few parts for it, but we're changing from roller weights to slider weights, changing up the weight of the weights a little bit. And then I got an exhaust for it. So the point is I'm doing all the tuning now, dialed the way I need it to go, running the way I need it and be able to keep up with the 150 plus stuff. So the history of this arrow is the person I bought it from drug it out of like a creek bank or a riverbed or something. I don't know how it got there. It's pretty beat. We don't have a title. I've applied for the abandoned vehicle title thing. We'll see if that ever comes through. But in any case, the rear of the bike was definitely sitting in the river at some point in time. I don't know for how long it sat there. Everything in the back was ruined. The engine, I've never seen that much corrosion on something that's only 40 years old. Like there was no saving it whatsoever. Everything had to be hammered apart, beaten apart, broken. Like it was a mess. So this is what we had left to save. To illustrate how bad it was. So we have the fuel center unit here, right? 
and I cleaned it all up, got all de-rusted and all that. And when I took this cover off, it had a bunch of putty in it. And I was thinking, okay, that's probably like, you know, fuel resistant putty so it doesn't contaminate the resistor mechanism. No, it was mud. This whole unit was full of mud, which is astounding considering the fact that the tank doesn't even have pinholes in it. This thing has 100% been through some shit and I think it's worthy of bringing back from the dead. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Well, that looks substantially different now, doesn't it? I need to get the frame cleaned, prepped, and then treated with rust paint before I can even start building because there's no point to build on this. I just can't get over the fact that they dimple dyed pieces of the frame, which is awesome. All we're doing right now is the really small stuff that takes a lot of time, specifically fixing all the plastics because at this point, you know, the plastics are 40-ish years old. Well, actually exactly 40 years old. I will show you the worst bits just so you know that I'm not working with, you know, perfect components. Like this is garbage. All these parts are garbage. But that's kind of our theme here. Build stuff that really shouldn't be built. And what I mean by that is stuff that's more or less garbage or parts bikes, you know, like the Suzuki over there. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes that I'm not gonna bother showing you because it's really tedious and also not that interesting, but I will show you the worst bits just so you, again, you know where I'm starting from. On each side of the frame down there, there's a little one of these, it's just a piece of a body that the floor sits in. Almost all the components on this side facing the camera were shot, full of mud, just fully degraded. So the side that was on the right here just was not savable. It was too far gone. The left, however, is savable. So this is the savable side. I ended up just chucking the other side and you see what we're dealing with. Like there's through holes right there and the back side is just as bad. I ended up having to buy a second one. And look, this one's nice and pretty decent and I bought it off eBay and it's not like my bike whatsoever. It's like, that's how it's supposed to be after 40 years. Not looking like the Titanic because it's been sitting on a riverbank for God knows how long. This is really the quality we should be starting with, but here we are. And there's the typical, like this is the right side, side cover. This is one I actually just bought as well. And there's little like flared studs that pop into the body. As you can see, that one's pieced out. And someone's already tried to like use that um, epoxy, which doesn't really work. So we're gonna actually plastic weld them. And there's also supposed to be little connectors here, like a little bridge. That way the other piece of plastic can snap in here and they're just gone. All of them are gone, except that one. Well, that one's also cracked and this one's gone. So like this little visor, which again, this was when I bought online. It's got, you know, years of crap caked up on it. Funnily enough, this bike only has 2,300 miles on it. That was a pretty rough 2,300 miles.
I jumped ahead a bit just because I'm on a time crunch and I don't think it's that interesting to watch me bag and tag all the bits and pieces that I took off this frame because a lot of it we're not even using. And at this point, we only need to pull out two or three bolts out of this donor assembly to start mocking it up in that frame. The forks are gonna be a weird one. I would like to reuse the Vino front end because it has disc brake and a better tire and stuff. The tires are actually the same size. So absolute worst case, I might just steal that tire assembly and then modify the original Honda fork to accept the caliper. I'm not totally sure yet. Oh wow, that bolt is even loose. That's awesome. Get out. There we go. We should be able to lift and scoot. What do I do with this frame now? I guess I'll put it over here. I didn't think this one out. I don't know what to do with Ow, shit, there. I'm out of shape. Oh, get it. Ow. Asshole. It's weird, the subframe for the donor engine has its own center kickstand, and the Honda we're starting with has a center stand on the frame. So, wouldn't it be weird to have two center stands? There's a very good chance we're not gonna end up using this stock airbox. I want to, given the fact that it was engineered to go with this engine, but we have to work with the limitations we are given within the frame. Oh, that, I don't think that was supposed to come apart that easy. In case you're wondering, this is not the factory exhaust because I found this one on eBay. It was used, it was beat up. The clear coat on the inner side where it meets the wheel was all blown out because all the muffler packing was gone. So it created a hot spot. But in fixing it, I found this thing's an actual real exhaust, like not a clean one. So it's actual real carbon fiber. It's stainless tubing. Like it was actually a proper engineered product, not some Chinese clone, which is incredible considering I paid like nothing for it. I was trying to find specs and original price and stuff like that. And just honestly, more information about it. Turns out it's by a company called MRP, which I think was probably just an enthusiast who was building these for fun. But I found their website and someone's even still paying for the domain on it, but it's like a very shittily made circa 2007 website. And there's an article in there saying, hey, we're introducing this exhaust. And that article was from like 2008. And it sounds pretty good. I'll show you once everything's built, but all I had to do was repack the muffler, re-clear the carbon and bolt it on. So we have this factory mount, if I can get it out now, there you go, that has bushings in it. And they actually look pretty good. What I'm thinking is we're gonna run this as it were from factory. And then we're gonna adapt or cut up this bracing to bolt up to here. So I think cutting it like right here and just trash this piece. And then instead of mount, brackets that attach like down here and then go up to here. And then we retain the bushing and the factory mount for that matter. So it should still pivot as it needs to. This can go here. You'd think that since I just took this thing all apart, I'd have the hardware on hand and ready to go. But I do in fact not. It's gonna look goofy though like stretched goofy. Okay, well I guess we can't use the light because the camera just refuses to focus properly. So you see a couple issues, right? This Vino engine has two clutch covers. There's the metal one that is the actual structural one, which isn't super pretty. Then there's this plastic one, which is the prettier one, but it's hitting the body and I'm not cutting the plastics. That's just not happening. Pretty cover needs to come off, but you can also see some weird shit going on. Originally the wheelbase was probably like half a foot shorter where like the center of the wheel was like here, but now it's over here. The other thing that I'm worried about is this is where the taillight goes and the taillight's part of the body. Like I can't delete that. These are just dummy lenses. They don't have lights in them. The turn signals were up here. We might still use the Vino ones because they don't look super bad. They're just square, which would fit the 80s look. But I think I have to cut this up to cut off this license plate mount because obviously that hangs down another six inches below the edge of the frame, which is already hitting the tire. That fits better. It's still a little weird. What I'll probably do is make a plastic duct for this so that way it doesn't keep pulling water. I think we can work with this. Like I can definitely make this cover nicer because it's rough cast aluminum and you can see all the striations and imperfections that were in the mold. And since this is gonna be what it looks like now, I don't really want that looking like that. The only pain in the ass is with this engine is for whatever reason, they use a sight glass in the side. And that means you have to change the oil when you pull the side cover off. Okay, I think I have everything pretty much mocked up as close as I can get it without putting this thing on a frame table. And then height wise, this is accounting for droop. Ideally when it's underweight and once the Vino front end is on, everything should be 
more or less level. I don't know how much the Vino front end is going to lift this or lower it. I'm not, that's a variable that I'm not sure on yet. At least for now, I'm going to try to tack it in place just to put it all on the ground under its own weight and then make some more decisions. The brackets I made are gonna to bolt to the Honda factory mount. And then on the Vino factory mount, I've cut the ears off. So that way the whole engine can scoot closer to the frame. And there's a crossbar that connects both the sides together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weld these onto said bar and then bolt through into the Honda factory location. These are quarter inch plate. They're more than enough for this three horsepower engine, but as a secondary bit of support. We're going to put a rod through both the plates, hopefully let them share the load. I'm going to have to unbolt the exhaust real quick just to get the second mount in and then just modify the mount once it comes time to clear the exhaust. So we have play in it, which is good. While it's not super pretty, it does seem to work. Well, it's on its own weight. It's still a little raked, which is good because I think the Vino front end is gonna lift the front. And I have about two inches of, I guess, negative rake. So if the Vino stuff lifts it two inches or less, we're good. Normally, I really, really hate Chinese clone parts because they never fit anything. So this is a Chinese gas cap. God knows what it fits. This is the factory gas cap, which is crusty. And all I was gonna do was steal the gasket off of the new one and put it on the old one, but I can just take the new one and drop it right onto the gas tank and it fits very nicely. So I'm guessing that means the Chinese manufacturers cloned Honda parts from the 80s, but it's just funny that it's, you know, slightly different and obviously lower quality, but, but it literally drops right on and seals up nicely. And to reiterate that point, I needed a fuel pet cock because I didn't have one. And guess what that is? Literally another Chinese clone part. This filter obviously needs to fit in there, but the old filter's still in there, so I need to punch that out. But again, the identical exact part that I needed, and it drops right on. We've come full circle. I'm still gonna just reuse the gasket from this one. Slightly different, and this gasket's just so far gone. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to get it off in one piece. Oh wow, it's even still a little bit malleable too. Also throw in the fuel sender which this has been fully cleaned out. I've tested it, it does change resistance when it moves. So God knows if that works. There we go. And only a little bit of trash got freed when I did that. Just breathe in the aerated varnish. That's an ideal scenario. Let the fan run real quick and ruin the audio. And then pick back up here when it's time to do whatever we're supposed to be doing. So originally this bike had a sealed beam light, which means when it goes bad, you have to replace the whole unit. You can't just replace the bolt. That's part of it because it's all soldered together like so. This has specific mounts on it for this moped and it attaches to this specific frame. I can't just go buy a generic four by six headlight and have it work. To just save myself future headache for when the bulb does burn out, I did go buy generic four by six headlights that have a serviceable port for a regular bulb. Very easy to find a bulb for it versus the whole housing. The issue with that is the original one had mounts that I need to now drill the spot welds out of and attempt to spot weld them onto the new headlight. So I've marked where they need to be. And then I lately massaged it right here and on the lower side, just so it fits this bracket. So yeah, we're just gonna zip it on, I guess, and just see what happens. Missed the alignment a little bit. That's not a big deal. And the lens is smoked up because of the cancer gas that doing what I did put off, but it all works as it should. It's done. So that can go in the basket of things to deal with later. The foam is pretty much trash. I'm just gonna try to smooth it out as best I can because when I bought it, this whole like middle section, actually you can kind of see where it's more discolored than the rest. That's where the seat cover had ripped. And over the years, it just kind of like grew algae and just, so like up front here, the old cover was on it until I removed it. So the foam's actually pretty decent, but back here, it's it's like the surface of the moon. I've just got a sanding wheel on an impact there, and I'm just gonna go through and just smooth it out as best I can, just so that the new cover will fit nice and smooth, and also will hide some of the imperfections. And then I got a, a nice new repop seat cover, it's like a proper one too. I'm not gonna show it because it's literally just me doing this for like probably an hour, just going. 
and that's not super interesting. See, I told you it was gonna be a lot. It smells really bad, like retirement home, old timey asbestos or whatever. But I mean, overall it looks pretty good. It's smoother now. Like the divots that are still here shouldn't be that visible. I may have to get the steamer out to uh, get this all to relax. Cause I did buy this like well over a year ago and it's been folded up in a package for a long while. But I mean, so far that looks, looks pretty good. All we're gonna do is just staple it back on the way it was previously. Same thing, just slowly work around. You don't wanna create wrinkles, don't wanna create creases, and you need to staple the shit out of it. I think that's a pretty good place to wrap up. I mean, I wanted to reassemble it, one, for motivational purposes, so I can you know, see it as a cohesive unit, but secondly, to start seeing how I need to mock up the rest of the components. But in any case, it's assembled. I've found a few issues that need to be fixed, most of which are pretty easy. So we can just keep moving along with this. I have multiple months to do this, but being that this episode alone was already two weeks late, I can't let myself get distracted with another project. So I just need to get this thing done. We're moving along with this. Next episode will be this. I'm not starting or finishing another project until this is done. The biggest thing is gonna be wiring since we're merging 80s stuff like the lights and dash and things like that with the old harness, which is a different size bike entirely. So that's gonna be the biggest hurdle. I'm gonna try to stick back with my posting early in the month. If all goes well, I'll have the next episode out by early May. So two weeks, two and a half weeks. We'll see how that goes. I think it's a little optimistic, but in any case, I think it's a good place to wrap up. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. We're going full 80s here with shitty audio and everything. This chassis, oh, Tesla's home. That's hands down the most annoying noise. God, I hate that noise. You can see Nothing because the camera's out of focus. What are we doing? What is that? What are these things? Why is there so many little tubes and things just everywhere? Not pretty, but it'll do the job, I think. Nope, it won't do the job. Yep, yeah, nope. Okay. And pick up when it's time to, you can't see anything. This, the camera has decided that it was not gonna focus on anything in particular. Ow, fuck me, that hurt.